together. And um, uh, I believe uh, us as the remnant, us as we have been through this tough time, God has something big, something mega for us all. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I am going to speak something, uh, just a few minutes about the vision. I'm not preaching, but I'll just tip to here and there. Uh, because, you know, we need to uh, remind each other and be aware of the vision of the church um, now and again as we journey. Uh, probably, uh, uh, if you don't mind, quickly just open with me your Bible to the book of Proverbs 29, uh, verse 18. Um, praise God. Amen. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Praise God. The Bible says where there is, I'm leading from New King James Version, but uh, I think King James Version, I love it. It says where there is no revelation, the people uh, pass off restraint. Uh, King James Version says where there is no vision, people perish. Amen. So we all need vision in life. As a church, we need vision. And uh, again, and again, we need to remind each other, enlighten each other about the need for us of the vision because um, we know the vision is what will give us passion uh, for what we're doing. Uh, it's a prerequisite for that passion. Uh, so the use of this ministry is what will run this ministry, is what will drive us to achieve what God has in store for us in this same time as we take the gospel into all parts of the world. So that's what I'm here for, because the Bible make it very clear where there is no vision, people perish. So yeah. we need this vision and we need again and again to be reminded uh, of this vision. And I pray to God that even pastors in our, our churches all over the world, we're reminding people about the need uh, for them to know the vision, because that's what would give us the drive to move forward as a team to get in one, 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 one unity. That's what will give us that passion to, um, uh, to fulfill our purpose, to achieve what God has called us to do as a ministry and as a body of Christ. Praise be to God. Amen. So that's very important for us to understand. And um, um, as I said, that, you know, uh, I'll just tip to you on a few things that, um, you know, I want us to be aware. I know uh, we don't have much time to say we're teaching each other, then we're reading and we're, you know, uh, breaking it even. But I'll just tip to it. But I know for sure, man of God, you have time to explain to the church as we journey as we move forward. Um, yes. yeah, Weapons of Revival is, um, uh, is a church that is founded on a very strong uh, uh, um, cornerstones. And uh, I'm grateful uh, uh, because uh, Pastor Corey has grabbed one of the cornerstones, which is very important to the way forward of the ministry, uh, about making disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the chief cornerstones of uh, this ministry. Um, uh, I'll leave this another scripture just quickly because I think it will, it will help me to Ezekiel uh, 34, verse 11 and 12. The Bible says, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out as a shepherd seek out his sheep in the day that is among the flock that are scattered. So I will seek out my sheep and I'll rescue them out of the places where they have been scattered in the day of the clouds and the thick darkness. So in Ezekiel 34, leading from Amplified, goes, I myself, I'll look for my sheep and I'll seek them. How does God do that? God will do that through you and me. Praise God. Amen. Through you and me. You and me, we avail ourselves. God will use us to seek for that sheep. And I'm grateful Kids Green as a church have known. You have emphasized a lot on making disciples of all nations. So Quickly, uh, I will not go into the details of it all, but I believe uh, men and women of God in, in different uh, platforms will be able to explain to this church. But I'll just uh, highlight a few key things which are very important uh, to, uh, to uh, weapons of revival uh, as a church. Praise be to God, the vision. Uh, first and foremost, the vision of weapons of revival is grounded on uh, the mindset of soul winning which is um, based on Keith Green there, you emphasize on making disciples of all nations. So God made it available so much that, you know, this ministry is going to be, um, is going to be a drive for soul winning. 
So it should be our commitment every time when we're praying, uh, whatever we're doing as a church, whatever we're doing as, uh, as a family, you know, we've got the mindset, we're instilling the mindset of soul winning, uh, mindset of making disciples of all nations. And we know this was the ministry of Jesus Christ at all levels and whatever we are doing all the time. So that's why you hear me saying that where there is no vision, people perish. We need to know what is in the vision. We need to know what is the prerequisite for our passion. We need to know what is driving us to fulfill our God-given purpose. We need to know what God wants us to do in this end time, as we know that Jesus is coming soon. So that's what there was the first cornerstone that is so key to uh, weapons of revival. And uh, there are some scriptures there, but I think man of God, that he, you know, it's very important, maybe once in a while, uh, break it even to the church uh, in Kids Green, um, uh, to the leadership, so they know these things. It's very important as we pray together. So um, I don't want to take the time for our summit today, which is Bible reading. Uh, so uh, cornerstone number two, which is very important to the weapon of weapons of Bible, is weapons of Bible is a is a center of God experience in ministry. Now, yeah. in order for people to come in a place and experience God, as ourselves, we need to know God. We need to have God. We need to be people who thrive, who desire to have the presence of God. So God said, if Weapons of Bible International Church shall be together and in one love and keep the faithfulness that God has ordained for the church, all these things God has spoken will mature and will come to pass. So it's a co-winning uh, ministry, but also has a cornerstone of God experience, which means wherever you see Weapons of Bible as a church, we have to have that Mind that knowledge that this is not just a mere body, this is a center where when people come in this place, they have experienced God at all level. Praise be to God. Amen. Uh, number, two, number three that I wanted to highlight is Weapons of Bible is a family reunion ministry. So you can see it's a family ministry. As a family, we're going to come together. There are many things that if I was had time just to teach, probably just a family reunion, uh, teaching on a family reunion was going to take us maybe even half an hour just to break it even what God was saying and how God wants us to be doing. But let's just have that mindset that it's a third cornerstone. It's a family ministry. So we always do things together. We do the book of Acts, you know, where they came together as a family. They broke to break together. They grew together. The church was expanding together. So let's emphasize our point of reuniting family. Uh, point number three, uh, number four, cornerstone number four on weapons of revival is a healing and deliverance ministry. Uh, and we know it's one of the most important things that is needed in the church of God. You know, Jesus, uh, when he ordained the disciples, he sent them two by two, and then he gave them power. And he said, as you go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, in the flee I give you, and you, you know, freely give it away. Now here, it's not just dead people, but it can be dead, you know, visions, dead dreams, dead, you know, many things at many level. So this also is a sense of healing and deliverance. Point number four, um, number four, that's what I wanted to, to, to mention. Uh, so we've got three, these four corners, and I want us to really pick it up as a soul winning ministry, as a uh, center of God experience ministry, as a family union ministry, but also as a healing and deliverance ministry. Now, uh, one thing that I'm, I'm jumping a lot of things, man of God, but I don't want to take all this time for us because I want us to concentrate on what we're, what we're here for. Now, yes, uh, one thing that I want us to understand is that uh, the covenantal agreement of this ministry, you know, if we're to move forward, there has to be an agreement amongst us as among ourselves and as with God. So there's a vision, I call it a covenantal agreement. So there are some few key things that are there in the covenantal agreement to drive uh, this uh, body, this branch of God, this ministry into where God wants us to be in this end time as we're determined to fulfill what God has called us to do together as a family. So these are the things that uh, we're making. So having received Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Now, this is an individual confession. I make confession, you make confession, everybody make confession. Having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and being baptized and being agree in agreement with Weapons of Revival International Church vision statement and its structure, I now feel led by the Holy Spirit uh, to unite with the Weapons of Revival International Church family. In so doing, I commit myself to God and to the other members of the church for the following. So this is a commitment we're making that I will follow God's commandment and the law. 
So this has to be a commitment that we make all the time as as believers, as as children of God, that I will follow God's commandments and laws at all times. If I'm to be a candidate, rather a legal candidate to lead the people, more especially as ministers of the gospel and leadership at all levels, I make a commitment, I will follow God's commandment and laws. And number two, I'll, I'll act in love towards other members. You know, you commit, commit yourself that you act in love towards other members. And um, I also follow my leaders. That's another key point. You make a commitment, I'll follow my leaders, much as your leaders also follow God. Uh, let us, so therefore, uh, there's a scripture that there is uh, Romans 14, 19 that God gave us, but I want us to look into that. Another point that I want, we, we covenant ourselves as we take this ministry to new levels that I will continue praying for its growth. So it should be our individual commitment to continue praying for the growth of the ministry. It should be the commitment of us leaders to continue praying for the growth of the ministry, the growth of members. Um, when I'm talking about growth, it's growth at all levels that God will guide you to, to think of, not just growth in number. Growth is spiritual, growth at all levels. But also, uh, I will also commit to invite others to be a part of what good God is doing, to attend or to be a part of what God is doing in this end time. And I also warmly welcome uh, those who visit, those who attend. So you can see that we are built, built on love. We're going to warmly welcome those who attend, who are joining, who are visiting, who are being part of us. And the other point that I'm going to say, these are the last points, but in there, there are scriptures that uh, we can go in detail. The last points I will say that uh, I will serve uh, the work of functional ministry of weapons of revival. Praise be to God. And the, uh, I will serve the work of the functional ministry of this. Rather, I will discover uh, my giftings and uh, my uh, talents in this ministry. So this ministry will open the room for you to discover your giftings. This ministry will open the room for you to, to discover your talents and also to grow your talents and discover your giftings. But also, I'll, I'll be equipped to serve uh, my leaders. So it's a commitment of everybody to be equipped to save your leaders. And uh, as I said, that's why you saw me in my introduction uh, to come here and say thank you so much for standing with your leaders, more especially over the COVID. It was a very challenging situation. Uh, we didn't get to see each other as we would want, but you stood with your leaders. So that to me, you've been fulfilling the vision of Weapons of Earth. You've been part of what God is doing uh, in this ministry in this same time. But also, I would develop, uh, I would de uh, developing a servant heart. The other thing that God wants us to do, God wants us to develop a servant heart. Let us learn to serve as a ministry because we know we're not doing this because of, you know, the lords of the harvest is our heavenly father. So as a ministry, let us commit ourselves. It's in the vision of the ministry, but let us have this conviction that, Lord, I'm committing myself. I will develop a servant heart. I will serve my people. I will serve my leaders. I will minister to God before my leaders and before other people. As we do that, we are doing the vision of the ministry. But above all, I want us to know that where there is no vision, people perish. So I want us to have a vision. And I urge uh, pastors and leaders, if we could do this once in a while in the year, pick up, pull out the, I mean, the, 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 the script of the vision, teach the people, teach the leaders, build them not to lose the oil of the vision. Let us be together. That will bond us as a global church. We, we, we have churches in Africa. We have churches here that will bond us together as a global church to know where we're heading, where we're going to, and we're not missing what God has in store for us in this same time. So having said this, I just want to wish uh, this summit uh, some great time. And I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will inhibit this uh, summit. Uh, everything will be great. And, um, you know, people, we're not just going to lead for the sake of leading, but out of leading, there's going to be understanding. We're going to grow. We're going to become better. And we're going to take this, what we're learning here today, and, you know, distribute it and take it to other people as we grow together. So, yeah, God bless you so much. And I wish this conference all the best. And I pray the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us as we move forward in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Uh, thank you, Bishop, for that uh, powerful and uh, uh, welcoming uh, remarks and the vision of the church. Uh, we welcome you all. I've seen uh, people uh, joining in uh, from uh, different parts of the world. We appreciate you so much and uh, we are grateful to God. And because it's Bible Reading Summit, we don't want to waste time. I just want to acknowledge you. Uh, uh, my elder 
uh, leader and fellow leaders uh, in the board of Christ. I've got Pastor Wupanda uh, in uh, in the house today. We've got uh, Pastor Luanda and Pastor Champo, Mr. and Mrs. all the way from South Africa uh, joining us today. Uh, we are so grateful uh, to, to have you uh, in the house today and we are so thankful to God, uh, Bishop Mkandawile and everybody that has joined uh, in. And shortly we'll begin to read the word of God. I'll just run through a few things and we'll be pausing here and there uh, for Bible quiz. Uh, we started this uh, some uh, years back and every year we have Bible reading uh, summit where we just come to read the word of God without anybody explaining but we just want to hear God as God speaks. So you are all welcome uh, to this uh, wonderful, wonderful summit and uh, it's the talk of the day and we have been looking to say we need to hear the word of God. We need to come together and uh, have just uh, read the Bible uh, together. That's the way God wants us to, to do and it's a good thing just to read the word, the word of God. Amen. And you can give yourself a clap uh, offering because God is a faithful uh, God. He wants us to read the word. He wants us uh, uh, to continue trusting him as we hear the word, the word of God. I just want to encourage you that there is no any other God and uh, it is live on our Facebook pages and other platforms. Please, uh, time and again, visit the website, uh, like and share. Uh, the the word of God. Why are we reading the Bible? It's God's word. It brings life and healing to us. It's the most important thing that we can ever do. To know God better, we need the word of God. Only surety that we have and safety is in the word, the word of God. So if you look at the word of God, the whole world that we crave for and the things of the world that we run after all were created by the word of God. So when we have the word of God, we can have all that the world is offering because God created everything by his word. So I just want to encourage somebody uh, that um, uh, God uh, wants us to know his word. He wants us to love his word. And as we go on, uh, we'll be sharing um, uh, more of uh, great things that God has in store for us. And I just want you to know that um, today we are just reading the word, the word of God. And uh, to get started in this book of Revelation, I know some people, you may have never read uh, the book of um, of uh, revelation uh, before in a sitting like this but uh, that should not uh, uh, threaten you that should not uh, uh, bother you because i know that as we read the word of god as we trust god today i believe that uh, god is going to speak to us god is going to minister to each one of us and i know that uh, you are going to be blessed at the end of this uh, uh, session because when you when you look at the word of god actually the book that we are about to read today uh, the bible says uh, read whoever reads the prophecy of this book shall be blessed it's the only book in the Bible with the audacity to say, read me and be blessed. I know we use that reference in Revelation to the whole Bible. But when you go into scriptures, uh, only the book of Revelation brings out that truth to say, read. Anybody who reads the prophecy of this book shall be blessed. So let's get understanding as we hear the word, the word of God. And we are going to cross over nations and go to South Africa for our first uh, reading of chapter number one. Uh, all the way uh, to uh, South Africa uh, today as we hear the word of God. Uh, Pastor Champo uh, in uh, Johannesburg, uh, please, uh, if uh, you can uh, come through uh, with, uh, with the camera or without the camera, whichever way it will be. Uh, uh, comfortable uh, for you, sir. Uh, you are most uh, welcome. So let's cross over to South Africa. Pastor Champo, over to you, sir. Uh, if you can uh, unmute and uh, then uh, just uh, 
yeah uh, come through i uh, can see mama luando champo uh please uh, if uh, pasta is uh, uh, nearby uh, just uh, to get started uh, while we are waiting uh, for pastor champo uh, please if you uh, put this uh, the camera on and also just uh, to uh, unmute uh, that will be that will be appreciated uh, even as we uh, we get to south africa joan's beg to hear the word of god over to you pastor if you can just unmute uh, this is a servant of god uh, we've labored together we've uh, shared uh, uh, ministry together uh, great to have you sir if you can just unmute and uh, then uh, read for us chapter number one and uh, we'll go on just like that amen and amen you can unmute uh, man of god i'm using my wife's uh all right that's all right so i was looking at a different uh, uh screen that's all right that's all right sir go for it uh, liberation chapter number one this is down <laughs> that's okay bless okay. you sir thank you so much thank you uh bishop mkandawere thank you to the men of god thank you so much uh, uh, past, uh evangelist uh, uh simon in Kole and the, the family i'm so humbled to be part of uh, this Bible reading summit. I'll read from the New King James, mm. uh, the book of, uh, of uh, the, the chap, the first chapter, that is Revelation uh, one. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited Amen. actually. I'm very Amen. very excited. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so, Revelation chapter one. The, the Bible says this. Okay. Revelation chapter one from the New Living Translation. The Bible says from verse 1 this is this is a revelation from jesus christ which god gave him according to the events that will happen soon an angel was sent to god's uh, servant john so that john could share the revelation with god's other servants uh, verse 2 john faithfully reported the word of god and the testimony of jesus christ everything he saw verse 3 god blesses the one who reads this prophecy to the church and he, he blesses all who listen to it and obey what it says for the time is near when these things will happen verse 4 this letter is from john to the seven churches in the province of asia grace and peace from the one who is who, who always was and who is still to come from the seven uh, fourth spirit before his throne verse 5 and from jesus christ who is a faithful witness to these things the first to rise from the dead and the commander of all the rulers of the world mm. all praise to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shed, shedding his blood for us. Verse 6, he has made us his kingdom and his priests who serve before God his Father. Give to him everlasting glory. Mm. He, he rules forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Verse 7, look. He comes with the clouds of heaven, and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the nations of the earth will weep because of him. Yes, amen. Amen. Then verse, then verse 8, the Bible says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come, the Almighty One. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, I am John, your brother. In Jesus, we are partners in suffering and in the kingdom. 
and in patient endurance. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and speaking about Jesus. Verse 10, it was the, Lord, it was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. Suddenly, I heard a, a loud voice behind me, a voice that sounded like a trumpet blast. Verse mm. 11, it said, write down what you see and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pagnam, Pagmam, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Verse 12, when I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven God lamp lampstands. Mm. Verse 13, and standing in the middle of the lampstands was the Son of Man. He was wearing a, a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. Verse 14, his head and his hair was uh, white like wool, as white mm. as snow. And his eyes were bright like flames of fire. Verse 15, mm. his feet were as bright as bronze, refined in, uh, in a furnace. And his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. Verse 16, he held seven stars in his right hand. And a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth and his face was as bright as the sun you know its brilliance verse 17 when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead but he laid his hand his, he laid his right hand on me and said don't be afraid i am the first and the last verse 18 i'm the living one who died look i am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Hallelujah. Write down what you have seen, both the things that are now happening and the thing that will happen later. Verse 20. This is the meaning of the seven stars you saw in my right hand and the seven gold lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lamps are the seven churches praise the lord amen and amen for the reading of the word hallelujah that was chapter number one let's go to west brom and hear the word the word of god deaconess shangala even as we continue with uh, the book of uh, revelation amen and amen thank you thank you so much uh, that was a powerful reading uh, of god's word amen and amen let's cross over uh, to west brom and uh, deaconess uh, changala uh, reading uh, the scriptures over to you chapter number two good evening everyone chapter number two reading from king's uh, king james version amen amen in Ephesus. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. And to the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, this, write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Uh, verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thy, how thy canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them, which, which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. Uh, uh, three, and has gone and has patience, and for my namesakes has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore, from when thou art fallen and repent and do the first work or else I will come unto thee quickly and will, will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. The truth. But this thou hast that, that thou hastest the deeds of the Nicolaite which I also hate. 
I think I'm going to switch to um, a different version. <laughs> no problem. That's all right. Well, That's good. all right. I'm Amen. Good. Okay, so we're going to read, I think, this is the American standard version, new American standard version, verse, verse okay. 6. Yet this you, you do have that you had the deeds of the Nicolaites, Nicolaites, sense, which I also had. Verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Uh, verse eight, and to the angel of the church in, in Samina, write, the first and the last who was dead and has come to life, says this, this man. I know your, your tribulation, and your poverty, but you are rich. And the blasphemy by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. The same. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. Verse 11, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. The third, and to the angel of the church in Pergamum, right. The one who has the sharp two-edged sword says this. Verse 13, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith. Mm -hmm. Even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Verse 13. But I have a few things against you, because mm -hmm. you have there some you have there some who hold the teaching of Balaam, who kept teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, to eat things, sacrifice to idols, and to commit acts of immorality. But mm -hmm. you also have some who in the same way hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore, repent, or else I'm coming to you quickly, and I will make war against them with the sweat of my mouth. Verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear, what the spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and a new name, written on the stone which no one knows, but he who receives it. Verse 18. And to the angel of the church in, in, in Pythia, right? The son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet are like burning Bro, says this, I know your deeds and your love and faith and service and perseverance, and that your deeds of late are greater than at first. Verse 20, but I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, and she teaches and leads my bond servants astray, so that they commit acts of immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Verse 21, I gave her time to repent, and she does not want to repent of her immorality. Behold, I will throw her on a bed of sickness, and those who commit adultery with her in too great tribulation, unless they repent of her deeds. Verse 22, and I will kill her children with pestilence, and all the churches will know that I am he who stretches the minds and heart and heart and heart, and I'll give to each one of you according to your deeds, the 24. But I say to you, the rest who are in Tyra, in, in Tyra, who do not hold this teaching, who have not known the deep things of Saturn, as they told them, I place no other burden on you. Nevertheless, what you have, hold fast until I come, the 26. He who overcomes, 
and he who keeps my days until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces, as I also have received authority from my father. Verse 28. And I will give him the morning star. Verse 29. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the word of God. Amen. Amen and amen. He who has the uh, ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying. Wow. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God for the reading uh, uh, of the word. Uh, Pastor Wupanda, if you can take chapter number three, I uh, can't see Sister Yolanda, but uh, 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 Reverend Wupanda, uh, if uh, you can uh, unmute and uh, help us with uh, chapter number three. If you can unmute, sir, as we uh, continue to read the word of God, the seven churches, the seven churches, the seven churches, the seven churches, and mm. you hear, he who has the ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying uh, to the churches. Amen and amen. 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 Over to you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. And here comes the reading. Amen from chapter 3 and unto the angel of the church in, Sad in Sadis write this thing says, the, says he that has the seven spirits of God mm. and the seven stars mm. I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest mm. and art dead mm. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Mm. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Mm. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and behold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He thou overcomest, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a, a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which thou shalt come upon all the world, 
to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that, hold fast that which thou hast, that no man taketh thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of God, of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodicea, write, This thing says the, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and that thou art neither cold nor hot. How do thou wait, cold or not? So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and I have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white remnant, that them thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye self that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and be with him. And he with me, to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. May the Lord bless his word. I can't hear anything. Sorry. You're muted. Oh, thank you. Thank you. These seven <laughs> letters were written by Jesus Christ himself to the seven churches as we hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. So let's be encouraged. Let's go over at Wednesbury. Pastor Bonface, the Bible is encouraging us. Let's hear what the, church, what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches who wrote the seven letters in Revelation. Jesus Christ himself, he says, these, write them to the churches and all the churches we are supposed to read and hear what God was saying. Over to you, Pastor Bonface. Thank you very much. Uh, this one. Amen. After this, I looked and after, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. Mm. The voice I heard, the, the voice I had first heard, speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up, and I will show you 
what must take place after this. Mm. At once I was in the spirit, and there and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Canelian, a lenable surrounding and an emerald encircled the flame. Surrounding the throne were 24, uh, 24 other thrones and sat on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crown of God on their heads. From the throne came flashing of lightning, rumbling and pressing of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were brazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there, there was what looked like a sea of grass clear as crystal. In the center surrounding the throne were four living creatures and they were clowned with eyes in front and behind. The first living creatures were like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had seven wings, had six wings and were covered with eyes all around, even under his wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is, and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sat on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sat on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crown before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and they live and have they have been. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Wow, 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 wow. And these creatures we see and the number seven keeps coming back i don't know how many times uh, we may not even manage to count uh, the sevens the sevens the sevens the sevens are uh, the perfect number of god but here we go as we share the word of god the bible tells us uh, uh, to say he began to hear he began to see meaning uh, john the revelator the one who was writing the book had an encounter with god he was seeing he was was touching he was talking and uh, he was surrounded uh, this is the beauty we love about the word of god it takes us uh, to where man was not before in genesis god creating the heavens and the earth and then in revelation it concludes the whole world will be wrapped up and everything will pass away and only the king of kings jesus will be there on the throne and uh, the bible says the 24 elders they bow before his throne so what we are doing praise and worship on earth we are just doing a rehearsal so don't be discouraged worshiping god the 24 elders they do it 24 7. what a mighty god we save amen and amen let's cross over to sister shekinah as uh, she reads uh, uh, chapter number five and then we'll go over to Baston. Uh, Sister Charity will be taking us uh, in chapter number six, studying the word of God and we are reading the book of Revelation. The Bible doesn't tell us in Revelation to say, hear what the pastor is saying. Did you hear what the other man says? But the Bible says, hear what the spirit 
of the Lord God is saying to the churches, is saying to all of us, Amen and Amen. Let's cross over, uh, Sister Shekinah, uh, please, if you pick it up. And uh, we just want to hear your lovely voice as you read your word. Is your camera on or you want without a camera? Go for it. Over to you, Shekinah. Um, I will be reading Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw a scroll in the right hand of one sitting on the throne. The scroll had writing on both sides. It was kept closed with seven seals. And I saw a powerful angel. He called in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But there were no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth who could open the scroll or look inside it. I cried and cried because there was no one who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. But one of the elders said to me, do not cry. The lion from the tribe of Judah has won the victory. He is David's descendant. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb standing in the center of the throne with the four living things around it. The elders were also around the lamb. The lamb looked as if it had been killed. He had seven horns and seven eyes. These are the seven spirits of God that were sent into all the world. The lamb came and took the scroll from the right hand of one sitting on the throne. After he took the scroll, the four living things and the 24 elders bowed down before the lamb. Each one of them had a harp. Also, they were holding golden bowls full of incense. These bowls of incense are the prayers of God's holy people. And they all sang a new song to the lamb. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were killed and with the blood of your death, you bought men for God from every tribe, language, people and nation. You make them to be a kingdom of priests for our God and they will rule on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voices of many angels. The angels were around the throne, the four living things and the elders. There were thousands and thousands of angels. There were 10,000 times 10,000. The angel said in a loud voice, the lamb who was killed is worthy to receive power, wealth, wisdom and strength, honor, glory and praise. Then I heard every living thing in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. I heard everything in these places saying, all praise and honor and glory and power forever and all praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever to the one who sits on the throne and to the lamb. The four living things said, Amen, and the elders bowed down and worshipped. You're muted. Let's go to Edge Baston. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Shekina, for the powerful reading uh, of the word of God. Amen and amen. Uh, let's cross over uh, to Edge Baston. And uh, Sister Charity, over to you, woman of God. Good evening. Thank you. I'm reading uh, Revelation chapter 6. Um, as I watched, the lamb broke the test of the seven seals on the scroll. Mm. Then I heard one of the living beings say with a voice like thunder, Come. I looked up and saw a white horse standing there. Its rider carried a bow, and a crown was placed on his head. Mm. He rode to many battles. He rode out to win many battles and gain the victory. Hallelujah. When the lamb broke the second seal, I heard the second living being say, Come. Then another horse appeared, a red one. This rider was given a mighty sword and the authority to take peace from the earth. Hmm. And there was war and slaughter everywhere. Hmm. When the lamb broke the third seal, I heard the third living being say, come. I looked up and saw a black horse and this rider was holding up a pair of scales in his, in his hand. And I heard a voice from among the living beings saying, a lot of wheat 
bread or three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay. Mm -hmm. And don't waste the olive and wine. When the lamb broke the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living being say, come. I looked up and saw a horse whose color was pale green. Each rider was named Death, and his companion was the grave. These two were given authority over one fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and the famine and disease and wild animals. When the lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw the altar of the souls of all who had been martyred for the word of God, for being faithful in their testimony. Mm -hmm. They shouted to the Lord and said, O oh, sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge the people who belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they have done to us? And a white robe was given to each one of them, and they were told to rest a little longer until the full number of their brothers and sisters, their fellow servants of Jesus, who were to be martyred, had joined them. I watched as the lamb broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. Hmm. The sun became dark as black cloth, and the moon became red as blood. Then the stars of the sky fell to the earth like green figs falling from a tree shaken by a strong wind. Mm. The sky was rolled up as a, up like a scroll and all of the mountains and islands were moved from their places. Mm. Then everyone, the kings of the earth, the rulers, the generals, the wealth, the powerful, and even slaves and free person all hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they cried to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. Who is able to survive? Thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Charity. And we hear the other Bible encouraging us and telling us uh, great signs and things will come on earth. And what uh, a chaotic uh, situation to the devil and his uh, angels. But for you and me, as we heard the Bible, hold on up to the end. Hold on. But we must carry on uh, holding on unto the word of God. That's what the scripture is encouraging us. Uh, let's cross over uh, to Mama Mambwe in Wensbury. Over to you, Mrs. Mambwe. If you can unmute, please. Uh, Mama Mambwe, if you can uh, unmute it, uh, please, uh, that would be that would be great. Uh, if you can uh, unmute, as we are looking at the book of Revelations, so the things so you have seen, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the things which are, and he's talking about the seven churches of minor Asia. When you talk of minor Asia, it's not oh. talking of Asia, as we see. Uh, Mama Mambwe, are you ready to go? Yes, in chapter 8. Uh, uh, you are now reading, uh, I think Sister Charity was uh, just uh, reading uh, six. You are reading uh, chapter number seven, please. Oh, okay. Amen. Uh, chapter number seven says, After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of, four corners of the earth, hmm. holding back the four wings of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on the tree or any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been uh, given power to harm the land and the, and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a 
seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of uh, Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From mm. the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the, from the tribe of uh, Asaka, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. The great multitude in white, in white robes. Uh, after this, I looked, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude uh, that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing a white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation mm. belongs to our God. Mm. Who, who sits on the throne and to the lamb? Amen. All the angels, all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God saying, amen, praise the Lord. And Amen. worship and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Then, one of the, then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? they were, and where did they come from? I hmm. answered, sir, you know. And he said, these, uh, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have uh, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they anger. Never again will they thirst. The mm. sun will not bend upon, will not bear, beat upon them nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hmm. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we see there again, we are seeing uh, God revealing his son when uh, the whole book of uh, uh, Revelation, uh, as we heard, uh, from there, from the scripture, the Bible tells us God himself gave a revelation to his son, Jesus Christ. And his son, Jesus Christ, gave a charge to John to reveal to his servants. So we see the whole book we are looking at uh, the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's move on into chapter number eight, even as uh, we read the word of God. The Bible says... When he opened, we are talking of the seven seals. I don't know how many sevens we're going to count uh, in the book of Revelation. But there we go. The revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in uh, chapter number eight, Revelation chapter number eight, during our Bible summit. The Bible says, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven and on earth half an hour. When I saw the seven angels who were in the presence of God, seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel with a golden censer or incense banner came and stood at the altar. He was given a large amount of incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints or the believers on the golden altar in the front of the throne verse 4 the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up into the presence of god 
from the angel's hand. Verse 5, the angel took the incense banner, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurried it on the earth. There were thunders, rumblings, lightning, and an earthquake. And the seven angels, who were the seven trumpets, prepared to blow them. Verse 7, the first angel blew his trumpet, and the hair on fire, mixed with blood, were hurried unto the earth. A third of the earth was bent up, and a third of trees were bent up, and all the green grass was bent up. Verse 8, the second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain ablaze with fire was thrown into the sea. So a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the sheep were destroyed. Verse 10, the third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star, brazing like a torch, fell from heaven. It fell on a third of the rivers and the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood. So many of the people died from the waters because they had been made bitter. Verse 12, the fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day was without light, and the night as well. Verse 13, I looked and I heard an angel frying in the mid heaven, saying in a loud voice, Woe, woe unto those who live on earth because of the remaining trumpet blast that the three angels were about to sound. May the God bless the reading of his word. Amen and amen. There are going to be earthquakes. There are going to be uh, great uh, thunders and things happening uh, on earth. Uh, but we see uh, what God was able uh, to do. The victory belongs uh, to our God. Uh, we'll cross over to Lester. Uh, Pastor Chris, uh, please, if you can uh, uh, take uh, the next uh, chapter, number nine. Over to you, Pastor Chris. If you can unmute, Pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Mm. Uh, reading chapter number nine from verses one. Amen. It reads, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star falling from heaven to the earth. Mm. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Mm. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great forest. Mm. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or mm -hmm. any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Five. And they were not given authority to kill them but to torment them for five months. Mm. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They mm. will desire to die and death will flee from them. Mm. The shape of the locusts 
was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they are crowned of something like gold, and their faces like the faces of men. Mm. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like the lion's teeth. Mm. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. Mm. Hallelujah. They had tails like scorpions, and they were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. Mm. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, mm. whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he was the name Apollon. Mm. But one woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. Mm. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the torment, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Ephraim. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year we are released to kill a third mankind. Mm. 16. Now the number of the army of the horsemen were 200 million. Mm. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyson, blue, and silver yellow. And the hairs of the horses were like the hairs of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. 18. By these three plates, a third of, a third of mankind was killed by the fire, and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. Mm. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents, having hairs, and with them they do hurt. Mm. 20. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, mm. that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood which can neither see, nor hear, nor hear. Amen. And mm. they did not repent of their murders, mm. or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their tears. May he honor the reading of his word. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. They're going to be great things. The Bible is revealing to us the things that John saw. Only the Bible can tell you things before they happen. And you see, it, when you read the book of Revelation, it's like you are watching a movie of the end times. God is so gracious. He has told us what is going to happen to the devil. No wonder the devil doesn't want people to read the book of Revelation and the book of Genesis. Because in Genesis, we understand understand how the devil came into the world but in revelation we see the end of the devil and his angels and all his cohorts and all the people that follow him but blessed be those that hear the word and the reading of this word amen and heaven thank you so much pastor chris and uh, we'll be concluding for today we'll just read uh, three more and then uh We'll be finishing off for today. Uh, Jonathan Mambwe in Wensbury, are you ready uh, to read the word of God as we are moving on? We see all these uh, signs happening in heaven, but this should not scare you. People say they don't want to read the Bible, especially the book of Revelations, because there are all these signs. Uh, but thanks be 
to God. God is showing us what he's going to do to the devil. He created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis, in Revelation, there will be the winding up and the destruction of everything that the devil has corrupted here on earth. Over to you, Jonathan Mambwe. Are you ready to read the next uh, chapter? Over to you. What's the chapter what? Uh, chapter number 10. Chapter number 10, please. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. Mm. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was mm. like the sun and his legs were like fairy pillars. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his foot he, plant, he planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. Mm. And he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And then the seven thunders spoke. I was about to write, but I heard a voice from the heavens say, seal up what the... Seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Mm. Then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. And he swore by who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it, and said, there will be no more delay. But in the days when the seven when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, mm -hmm. just as he announced to to his to his several servants to to his several servants the prophets. Mm -hmm. The voice that I heard from the la from the heaven spoke to me once more. Go take the scroll that lies open in the hand of an in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on mm. the land. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, take it and eat it. It will mm -hmm. burn your stomach sour, but in, but in your mouth, it will be as sweet as honey. Wow. It, it took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It tasted as sweet as honey in, in, in my mouth but when i had eaten it my stomach turned sour then i was told you must prophesy again about the many peoples nations languages and kings amen and amen wow jonathan you are a great preacher you have read so well god bless you Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's move on now to Leicester and continue to hear the word of God. We'll have two more chapters uh, and then uh, we'll be concluding for the day and we'll come back tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m. UK time uh, and that will be uh, 2 p.m. Lusaka, Pretoria, Harare. Uh, let's go to Leicester and uh, we've got our man of God, Brother Vesa, uh, taking us through into chapter number 11. Uh, over to you, Brother Vesa. Revelation chapter 11. 11. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, verse 1. Amen. I was given a, a, a re like a measuring rod and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar mm. with his worshippers. Mm -hmm. But exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will tramp on the holy city for 20, for 42 months. Mm -hmm. And I will appoint my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in cyclos. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstand, and they stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouth and devour their enemies. Mm. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. Mm. They have power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have 
powers to turn the water, waters into the blood and strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Mm. Verse 7. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack, will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is a figuratively called Sodom of Egypt, or Sodom and Egypt, where also where also their Lord was crucified, where also the Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, um, some from every tribe, from every people, tribe and language, a nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse their burial. Are you getting me? Amen. Yes. Verse 10. The inhabitants of earth will plot over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because they, these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But mm. after the three and a half days, uh, days the, the breath of the life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror stuck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. They stole. And that very hour, there was a severe earthquake and the tenth of the city collapsed. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to God of heaven. Verse 14, the second, I mean, the second war has passed. The third war is coming soon. Verse 15, this, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there was loud voice in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has come. The kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah and you will reign forever and ever. Verse 16, and the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their feet and worshiped God saying, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, mm -hmm. the one who is and who was, mm -hmm. because you have taken your great power and have begun mm -hmm. to reign, their nations were angry. Amen. And your wrath has come. The time has come for judgment, for judging the dead and for riding for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your, your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those, those who destroy the earth. Then God, God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumbling, peals of thunder, and earthquake, and severe hailstones. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. And, and amen. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Vesa, for the power of reading uh, of the word. I don't know if you catched the words there. The King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ said, the kingdom of the Lord has come through jesus christ our lord amen and amen there is no any other god uh, that is like this god jesus wins if you want to summarize uh, the book of revelation uh, simply means uh, jesus wins it's more or less like you're watching a movie of what is going to happen to the devil and his angels and those who don't want to believe in god the bible says jesus christ is coming back he will take over what belongs to him or his people and all the enemies including the devil shall be thrown uh, in the lake of fire and this is where we are now we are being taken into heaven to see what is going to happen and then what is going to be happening on earth even as our lord jesus christ comes uh, to take over the throne of his kingdom as we begin to wind up today's summit uh, just the last uh, two chapters and then uh, we'll be done uh, uh, is uh, jine in the house uh, today or oh, eliezer you can pick it up chapter number 12 uh, if that's okay and then we begin to uh, to conclude today's uh, uh, session uh, uh, eliezer if uh, you can uh, pick it up is as it we begin 
12? Uh, yes, please. Okay. It says, Revelation chapter 12 says, And then a great wonder appeared in heaven. There was a woman who was clothed with the sun. The moon was under her feet. She had a crown of 12 stars on her head. The woman was pregnant. She cried out with pain because she was about to give birth. Then another woman then another wonder appeared in heaven. There was a giant red dragon. He had seven heads with seven crowns on each head. He also had ten horns. The dragon's tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and threw them down to earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was ready to give birth to a baby. He wanted to eat the woman's baby as soon as it was born. Ch number five, verse five, the woman gave birth to a son. He will rule all the nations with an iron scepter, but her child was taken up to God and to his throne. The woman ran away into the desert to a place God prepared for her. There she would be taken care of for 1,260 days. Mm. Then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back. But the dragon was not strong enough. He and his angels lost their place in heaven. He was thrown down out of heaven. The giant dragon is the old snake called the devil or Satan. He leads the whole world the wrong way. The dragon with his angels was thrown down to the earth. Verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, The salvation and the power of the... The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have now come. They have come because the accuser of our brothers has been thrown out. He accused our brothers day and night before our God and our brothers defeated him by the blood of the lamb's death and by the truth they preached. They did not love their lives so much that they were afraid of death. So be happy you heavens and all who live there but it will be terrible for the earth and the sea because the devil has come down to you he is filled with anger he knows that he does not have much time the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth so he hunted down the woman who had given birth to the sun but the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle then she could fly to the place that that was prepared for her in the desert there she would be taken care of for three and a half years there she would be away from the snake then the snake poured water out of its mouth like a river he poured the water toward the woman so that the flood would carry her away 16 but the earth helped her the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that came from the mouth of the dragon 17 then the dragon was very angry at the woman he went off to make war against all her other children her children are those who obey god's commands and have the truth that god jesus taught 18 and the dragon stood on the seashore amen and amen and amen thank you thank you for the reading uh, of the word uh, sister uh, shekaina that was uh, that was uh, powerful that was good and uh, we thank god for everybody that has uh, uh, participated uh, in reading the word of god it is always a joy to read the word of god and we don't explain we just in the bible summit we just want to read the word of god and read the word of god and to sum it up uh, today tomorrow we'll pick it up from chapter number 13 for those who have not read uh, please don't worry you'll be reading tomorrow that uh, will start at 1 p.m uk time which is uh uh uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Malawi, Lilongwe, uh, Lusaka, Harare, and uh, Pretoria. Uh, those are the times. Uh, tomorrow, please uh, tune in. Let's just uh, try our 
uh, our Bible uh, knowledge uh, with these uh, a few questions uh, uh, prepared by our Sunday school children. How many apostles did Jesus have? If you can type in the chat, that would be appreciated. Uh, and let's see the answers, or you can shout them and mute yourself, even as we conclude uh, as we conclude uh, uh, the session today. How many disciples did uh, Jesus uh, have? Uh, 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 and we can have the answers there. Who wrote the book of Acts? Who wrote the well. book of Acts? Okay, uh, 12 there. Uh, who wrote the book of uh, Acts? Uh, let's hear some answers. Who wrote the book Dr. of Acts? Dr. Luke. Dr. Dr. Luke. Luke. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Luke, the same one who wrote the book of uh, Luke, is the one who wrote the book of uh, Acts. Who wrote the book of Revelation, the one we are dealing with today? John. John, fantastic, amen and amen. John who was the beloved disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, is the one that uh, wrote the book of uh, uh, Revelation, the disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ at the island of Patmos. We'll look at that tomorrow. Where did Jesus grow up? Where did Jesus grow up? Let's have some answers. Where did Jesus grow up as a child? <laughs> Those are these are difficult <laughs> questions. <laughs> Nazareth. 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 Okay. This one is very tricky. When he was a baby, he was Nazareth, uh, Egypt. Uh, and then, uh, okay. Very, very. <laughs> so the questions there are uh, Shekinah, help us. Where, where, where did Jesus grow up? <laughs> at what age are you looking at? Because when he he was a baby, they went to stay in Nazareth. They went briefly to Egypt. All right. She says the answer is Nazareth. Nazareth. Okay, but she kind of needed to be very specific. Uh, when Jesus was young, because when he <laughs> yeah. he died at the age of thirty-three. But anyway, that's uh, that's a good. Uh, a good uh, um, uh, 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 exercise. Who betrayed Jesus Christ? Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, everybody that uh, uh, tuned in today as uh, we were looking and we continue to look at uh, the book of uh, uh, Revelation uh, tomorrow. We'll start from chapter number 13. And thank you all for joining us. We've got people joining in from Leicester. Uh, we've got people joining in from uh, Johannesburg in South Africa. We've got uh, people joining in uh, from uh, Manchester. We've got uh, the, the Mpumbes uh, all the way from, uh, uh, from uh, 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 West Brom and uh, from... Uh, uh, Wensbury, we've got uh, uh, Uncle Bupanda uh, all the way in Bolton. Uh, we thank God at Baston and uh, all different places have been represented today. We are so grateful and tomorrow we will carry on from chapter number 13 of the book of Revelations. Uh, please, uh, uh, those who haven't read today, they are reading tomorrow. Uh, we come together just to study uh, book by book when God gave the word of God he gave them to read and what we are reading in revelation he was telling him write what you are seeing what you have heard so if he, he did not uh, write it down what he heard and so we were not going to have the bible today but we've got the 66 books of the bible they are there for us to read there are so many false prophets today in the world if you don't start the word of god for yourself somebody who feed you with wrong things. I tend mm -hmm. to believe that children as well, and we thank God, Jonathan, Shekinah Elias, and every child who has participated today, let's encourage them to read the Word of God, to understand uh, uh, the Bible stories, if they can be glued to the TV and watch uh, uh, other movies and know their names and characters, if they know the uh, players uh, of football, they can know the characters of the Bible. So I want to encourage each one of us uh, we continue tomorrow and Sunday just reading the word of God and to be enriched and be blessed 
with the word of God. Uh, Apostle Mkandawile, thank you so much for blessing us at the beginning and also everybody that has read and everybody that has uh, tuned in today. We are using the same logins tomorrow. Share the logins with your friends. Let's invite people to reading the word of God. And uh, with that, as we come to the end of the session uh, today, we just ask Pastor Mpumbe to bless us with the word of prayer, even as we conclude today's session. Over to you, Pastor Mpumbe. Amen. Lord, we are thankful for the day and the grace that has been given to us, Lord, to sit and to listen. Yes, Lord. To hear you speak. Yes, mm. Lord. We thank you, Lord, mm. for the love that you have for us. Yes, Lord. And surely, in accordance to your word, we yes. are blessed. Yes, Lord. Having heard your word read to us. Yes, Lord. Lord, for for the night and the the days that that lie ahead, mm -hmm. we are entrusting ourselves into your very hands. Mm -hmm. That these things that we have heard, yes, will dwell within us. Mm -hmm. We we'll reflect on them mm -hmm. for they are beneficial. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. for what mm -hmm. has been accomplished today. Yes, Lord. And looking to you, oh God, that yes, that Lord. which remains, yes, we shall be keen to yes. stay still and hear the, the yes. voice of the Spirit of the living God. Yes, Lord. Yes. For you have something in store for us. Yes. We are thankful, oh God. Yes. Praying for the leadership and the grace that has been upon them. Hallelujah. In coming up with a program like this one, yes, we are looking to you that grace be upon them in abundance. Yes, Lord. For Lord, this yes. being your doing, yes. we are blessed. Yes, Lord. For having been part of this participation, yes. receive the praise. Yes. Thank you that the kingdom of the world have mm. become the kingdom of our God. Yes. And with Christ. Mm. And we are part of that kingdom. Yes, Lord. Oh, we thank you. Receive the praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what mm. is here to come. Mm. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Yes, we bless Lord. you. Yes. That yes, our destiny. Mm. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. mighty God. We can't understand. We can't fully grasp. Mm. But oh, oh, Lord, in the descriptions of your word, yes. something wonderful is in its tone. Hallelujah. The children of the living God. Yes, mm. Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, God, our worship mm. of the living God is mighty not God. in vain. Mm. It's not in vain. No. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. There is eternity. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Eternity of bliss. Hallelujah. Oh, eternity of glory. Mm. Uh, oh, we thank you, dear Lord. Yes, dear Lord. mighty God. That people such as us could be part of that mm. glorious mm. kingdom of the living God. Hallelujah. What an honor. What an honor, mighty God. What a provision. Mm. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Mm. There's a reason to live. Yes. We have every reason mm. to yes. worship. Mm. There is every reason to worship. Mm. Because he has prepared a place. Mm. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for one another. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. In your worthy and precious name. Mm. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. And may the good Lord lead you bless each one of you. And uh, we meet again tomorrow. And we thank God for your lives and let's continue to trust God and to read his word. That's the life we have. There is everything we need. It is in the word. Life is in the word. 
All the wealth we need is in the word. Healing is in the word. Prosperity is in the word. Uh, anything, ministry, and our lives and our visions, they are all wrapped up in the word of God. So we cannot do without the word of God. Amen and amen. May the good Lord literally bless you tonight as we sleep. Something good is about to happen as we take hold of the word. The word of God in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And uh, all the things that are created were created by the word and for the word. Amen. So we have all we need in the word. God literally bless you. And shalom, shalom. We'll see you tomorrow. Amen. Amen. God literally bless you. Amen. Bye. 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 Everything and everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop.